How do I use graphs? All right, thank you, Tata. Your question was basically how can you use graphs in financial maths? And financial maths, we're dealing with money, that's finance. So we're dealing with your, if you have a business, your profit, the income, your expenditure, those sorts of things. So we're dealing with working with equations and graphs and things that just make our lives simpler in terms of reading the money that we are making and using. So let's just do a little bit of a recap in terms of financial maths and start off with profit. Now, what is profit? Profit is simple. It is your income minus your expenses. So what you get into the business minus what you're putting out, that little bit that is left or nothing or in minus is your profit. Obviously, the left over is profit. Um, yeah. So let's go. If you have on a set of axes, the graphs representing the expenses and income are drawn and they are separate. So you'll have your normal X and Y axes as in a graph and you'll have expenses and income on different lines and then you can see um, where you stand with the money you're making. If the expenses are more than the income, then the business is running at a loss. Obviously, if you are spending more than what you are making, you are losing money. And on the graph, you'll see the expenses line above the income line if you are running at a loss. So if you're spending more than you're making, you're gonna see the expense line above the income line on the graph. If the expenses um, are exactly the same as your income, so what you spend and what you make is exactly the same, then we say that the business breaks even. You're making the same amount of money. You're not losing anything and you're not making anything. On the graph, the break even point is where the two lines cross. So where they intersect on the graph, you'll see something like that. And that's where that's your break even point. So if asked in a question to show where a reading is taken, make sure you indicate on the actual on the relevant axis as opposed to just the point of intersection. Just a little point there for you. If the expenses obviously less than the income, then the business would be, yay, what we aim for, making a profit. And on the graph, what we will see is that the expenses line will be below the income line. And there you can kind of see, okay, I'm making a profit. Things are good. Mm -hmm. All right, little recap. Let's look at an example. It goes like this. Derek has a store at a flea market and he laminates A3 posters. The store costs him 3,000 Rand per month and each poster costs him 5 Rand to laminate. He charges 30 Rand per poster. Determine how many posters Derek must laminate in order to make a profit. Now I always say it's so important, especially with Massachusetts, to read your questions because there's so many little things you can dissect and take from your questions. Um, what are they actually asking here? They're asking how many posters must Derek laminate in order for him to make a pro profit considering his expenses and his income. All right, so let's look at how we can solve this one. In order to draw the two graphs, the equations for income and expenses must be determined. So for now, we're gonna make expenses E, um, income I, and N, the number of posters. Okay, it expenses E, income I, N, number of posters. What are his expenses? Again, read your question. They say that he spends 3,000 Rand a month, as an expense and also five rand for every poster he laminates. So we don't know what, how many posters he's laminating right now. We're working out an equation. Therefore, we're gonna say 3,000, which is standard, plus five times the number of posters that he laminates. So it's 3,000 plus five N. That is our equation. Our income is that he makes 30 rand for every poster that he creates. That's his income. So as a, once again, we don't know how many posters he's made, we're creating an equation, so we're gonna say 30 times the number of posters, and that gives us 30 in. So we're really working with an equation here, which is cool. What you may get after working out your little equation is a graph that you may have to fill in, knowing once you have your equation, it's pretty simple to just fill in the numbers on the graph. It says here, complete a table of values which will be used to draw the graph. So we know that his expenses are 3,000 Rand, um, whether he just flat out 3,000 Rand. If he is making 50 posters, he's still going to spend 3,000 Rand because that is a standard, that's a constant expense. But if he makes 50 posters, we can say that 50 times the number of posters he's making, so 50 
30 times the number of posters he's making, so it will be 30 times 50, and that gives us the income of 1,500, all right? Um, and you just work that way with, with the rest of your table. Use your, in, use your equation and just sum, supplement the, the values you have in the graph and just throw it in there. Once you have all the outcomes, once you've worked through all the outcomes of your, your equations, you can then construct your graph. And that's simple, that's your, your, um, x, uh, your y axis and your x axis. You put the number of posters, the money you're gonna make, and different lines for your income and your expenses so you, you can differentiate between the two. As we said earlier, when it's above, when the expenses is above the income line, you know that you are running at a loss. Um, when it intersects, break even, and when it's below, good, good, you're making a profit. And that we can see here. On this graph, we can see that towards the end, here, the income is above the expenses. So around that area, we know that they're making a profit. So we can conclude using, so now we can use the graph and kind of pick out what we need to know income, loss, expense, blah, 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 blah. Using the graph, it can be determined whether the company is making a loss, breaking even, or making a profit. At the point of intersection of the two graphs, the company is breaking even. Where the two points intersect, we know, okay, they've spent this much, they've got that much back, they have, they're breaking even. For Derek's posters, this occurs when he laminates 120 posters. So at 120 posters, if he generates 120 posters, he breaks even. He uh, doesn't make anything, he doesn't lose anything. Mm -hmm. For more than 120 posters, the income graph lies above the expenses graph and he will be making a profit. For less um, than 120, the income obviously lies below the expense graph and he would be making a loss. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that Derek must sell more than 120 laminated posters in order to make a profit. Mm -hmm. Quite a few pro posters. Yes, my name is Pamandla and I'm on Gilles Nazi Movie School. Maybe Mele Uzo or Dutin. Okay, so I'm Omuse, Uba, Nuagabani. How old are you and in which grade are you this year? Okay, uh, my name is Sovejani Tado. I'm a grade 11 learner here in Hujuan uh, High School and I'm 18 years of old. Okay, what's your question for a teacher in the studio? Uh, my two, my two question says, do I have to reach the break even point of the graph or to simply calculate it? How do you use graphs? And more likely, the question was, do you have to read the break-even point off the graph, or is it possible to calculate it? Now, in our last question, we dealt more with equations and how to use graphs and how to put uh, outcomes onto the graphs and then read off of it. What this question deals with is, do we have to use that graph for that break-even point in particular, or can we calculate it? And this is maths, guys. We can calculate it. Then. We don't need little <laughs> pictures. Math literacy is also about equations and calculations, okay? <laughs> Tell them! <laughs> All right. So, um, the number of persons that must be laminated and sold can be calculated rather than read off the graph. Uh, we're dealing with Derek's posters that we dealt with in the first one, so I'm just going to continue. In order to calculate the break-even point and hence how many must be sold to make a profit, the equations for the expenses and income must be determined and then solved uh, simultaneously. So we need equations for the expenses, for the income, and then we need to solve these simultaneously. How do we do this? We make income equal to our expenses. We're going to set up our equation for income, make it equal to expenses, and then we're going to solve, obviously. So for Derek's poster laminating business, income equals expenses. What do we know about his income? We know that he charges 30 Rand for posters, and then that de depends on how many posters he makes. If he makes two posters, he gets 60 Rand, and so on and so forth. So. Therefore, our income is 30 in, 30 times the number of posters he makes. Our expenses is 3,000 plus 5 rand times the number of posters he makes. So 30 plus 5 in. So making income equal to expenses, we've got the income is 30 in, expenses is 3,000 plus 5 in. 
But now we've got an equation here, so we're going to deal with it as we do with equations. We want to get the n on its own. We want to find out that breaking point, so we want to get that n on its own. We have an n on the right-hand side. It's that 5n. So we're going to move that over so we can get that n on its own and deal with that. We're going to move the 5n over to the 30n. It is a positive as it stands, and because we're moving it over across the equals sign, it will change to a negative. So 30 minus 5, we then are left with 25n is equal to 3,000. Now we have a simpler equation that we can work and just solve. Um, still want to get that n on its own. How are we going to get that n on its own? We're going to divide. So we're going to say 3,000 divided by 25, and that gives us n is equal to 120. And if you remember from our first question, 120 was the number of um, Posters. Posters. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That he needed to sell in order to break even. So that's how we work it out. This method is good to use when the exact values cannot be read off the graph. For example, when the point of intersection of the two graphs is not at the intersection of the two grid lines. So if you can basically can't read the graph, sometimes it's uh, they try and put too much in the graph, it's too big, it's too small, you have a calculation to work with, basically an equation. Income equal to expenses, and then you solve for that equation and you should be left with what you need. Mm -hmm.